but I just love dinosaurs. I think they're the most fascinating things that ever existed. For me, studying dinosaurs and learning about them is it's like solving mysteries every day. You're very often the first person who's ever seen the fossil that you're exposing in the Badlands, and uh, this is also very exciting. And I know that people get very passionate about their own fields, but I just can't imagine anybody having a better job than me. relatively little about dinosaurs and uh, that sounds very strange to a lot of people because they know that there are so many dinosaur names out there. In fact, there's about a thousand species of dinosaurs that we know about right now and that seems like a lot. But when you look at the modern world, you realize that there's over 10,000 species of living dinosaurs. They're, they're ones that we call birds. There's over 4,000 species of mammals. There's over 6,000 species of amphibians and reptiles. That's all at one time. We only know of a thousand species of dinosaurs for 150 million history that spans the entire world. We have so much more that we can learn about the species of dinosaurs that existed even. This dinosaur was collected on the Red Deer River. Uh, it was found when I was uh, stopping to take a photograph. This was in the late 1970s. Camera case fell off my camera and rolled down the hill. And uh, when I went down to get the camera case, the camera case had landed on the hips of this dinosaur. <laughs> I'm a vertebrate paleontologist and I specialize in dinosaurs. And I'm one of those kids who grew up always loving dinosaurs and always knew exactly what I wanted to be. And uh, it was quite an unbelievable story in the sense that I managed to get a job doing exactly what I wanted to do in exactly the place I wanted to be, Alberta. Because Alberta is one of the very best places in the world for dinosaurs. In Alberta, we've found, so far, about 100 species of dinosaurs, and that includes more than 40 species out of Dinosaur Provincial Park alone. And this is one of the richest ecosystems known for dinosaurs. Those dinosaurs include many of the most famous dinosaurs, animals like Corythosaurus, the helmeted lizard, Parasaurolophus, the one with the long tubular crest on the back of its skull, Centrosaurus, Chasmosaurus, Triceratops, Tyrannosaurus rex, Gorgosaurus, Albertosaurus, and Kylosaurus. These are some of the major dinosaurs that everybody seems to know as names, and they're dinosaurs from Alberta. I've been very lucky in that my wife, Eva, is a person who's also a paleontologist. Her specialty, though, is, is fossil plants, not dinosaurs. It's like being a detective to try and find out what uh, was in, uh, in these ancient environment. Generally speaking, paleobotany and paleontology is an underrated science uh, because it doesn't appear to be as exciting as dinosaurs and crocodiles, but the fact is that it is as important because if it wasn't for the plants, there would have been no dinosaurs. We have about 20 Centrosaurus bone beds in the park. I have a wonderful job. Officially, I'm a professor at the University of Alberta, but I'm also curator of the dinosaur collections at the university, and I do a lot of teaching. I, of course, train graduate students, uh, people who want to become paleontologists themselves. But the fun part really is getting out in the Badlands and looking for dinosaurs. Dr. Philip J. Curry is my professor at the University of Alberta. He's also my graduate supervisor. And Phil is a living legend. He is a generalist, one of the few dinosaur generalists that's still around. By that I mean he doesn't just study one kind of dinosaur, he doesn't just study one aspect of dinosaurs, he studies everything. He's worked on horned dinosaurs, he's worked on duckbills, of course he's worked on tyrannosaurs, he's worked here in Alberta into Mongolia. He's responsible for finding some of the very, very first feathered dinosaurs and describing them. So I found uh, this bone down here in, the, in this washout from the rainstorm, and I first thought it was a vertebra, but uh, when Phil, he pulled it out, it turned out to be uh, the occipital condyle from a, a centrosaur. Dr. Eva Koppelhaus is also one of my professors at the U of A. Eva is uh, wonderful. 
She is sometimes given the nickname of Quarry Mom, and she's the one that looks after us out here in the field. <laughs> he said, be careful, and then he's running down the hill. We take our students out to Dinosaur Provincial Park to train them in the uh, field techniques, what dinosaur bone looks like in the field, what's important, what's worth collecting, and then how you go about collecting it, how you dig it out of the ground, how you bring it back safely. Dinosaur Provincial Park is really special because of the fact that it has so many dinosaurs in it. Almost 5% of the world's known species of dinosaurs come from Dinosaur Provincial Park. And when you consider that dinosaurs had a history of more than 150 million years and that they, they're known from every continent in the world, to realize that 5% of all known species of dinosaurs come from this one single place in the world, that's, that's pretty amazing. Well, hadrosaur teeth, turtle shells, croc scoop. Historically, there's been a great divide between where dinosaurs are studied and where they're actually dug up. Most of the major universities and museums have always been on the East Coast. The University of Alberta is really changing that. We're a major research institution that's located at a place where we can find dinosaur bones in our backyard. And that's allowed us to really explode. We've produced a huge amount of research in just the last few years. And I really think the University of Alberta is going to be a shining light in paleontology. It's going to be leading the field for many years to come. We spend part of the summer collecting things and then the winter time and the early spring preparing them, stabilizing them, getting them ready for research. So the Dino Lab is really the place where we bring all this, the fossils from wherever we collect them. It's where I've really been able to put my time and effort into getting to know the science better and being able to do the research. The specialties that I'm really interested in would be feather evolution, the evolution of dinosaurs into birds and how that all kind of played out uh, over the millions of years that it took. What I'm working on at the moment is the skull of Sornitholestes. I just removed it from the body a few days ago, and the idea is to uh, prepare it out three-dimensionally. Our students are making a, a big difference in paleontology. We're publishing a lot of papers every year that push forward the, the edge of the sciences. The lab's important too because it gives students an opportunity to come and work on. It could be potentially specimens they found themselves or specimens that they're interested in doing research on. So. It's really good for people to be able to come and do some hands-on work. So my work on dinosaur locomotion focuses on understanding how dinosaurs were able to walk and run. And in particular, I actually look at dinosaur tails. And the tails of dinosaurs are really, really important for understanding their motion. When I first actually arrived at the University of Alberta, I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to work on. So I spent a lot of time reading papers and looking at popular media of dinosaurs and trying to get ideas. And I came across a picture book um, about ankylosaurs using their tails. And it occurred to me that nobody had really looked at how or why or whether or not they could even swing their tails as weapons. So some of the things that I've already found out are how they could use them, how hard they could swing them, whether they could withstand very like hard strikes against predators. Some of the things I'd like to understand now are really how and why these structures evolved, how weird things evolve in the fossil record. So I'm on my way to the Royal Ontario Museum to start a postdoctoral research appointment, so that's a two-year research appointment. Um, and the next things that I'm going to be looking at are understanding um, the biogeography of dinosaur groups like ankylosaurs, but also other dinosaur groups. Paleontology is a very, very competitive field. Generally speaking, there are two career paths a paleontologist can take. You can either get on as a curator at a museum or you can become a professor at a university. Frankly, I would be very happy doing either one. More than ever before, people are doing research on dinosaurs in novel ways, and these research approaches are only possible because of the fact that we have so many people looking at dinosaurs on finer and finer scales. So we will continue, I hope, to have more people employed in paleontology. At the moment, there's about 125 people worldwide who are paid to do research on dinosaurs. 
when you compare that to other professions, 125 for the entire world just isn't that much. But it's the best it's ever been. I just hope that the trend continues and we see even more people doing research on dinosaurs because we have so much more we can learn.